Hi everyone, thanks a lot for watching this video. The idea of this video is to show how to mesh a sphere with 3D 8 node hexa elements. Right? So to do that, we will just mesh one eighth of a sphere and then this mesh will be mirrored to have a full sphere mesh. We need to perform a little bit of geometric manipulation of the sphere to split it as it's displayed on the screen. Just to be sure, we start with meshing a cube and then we propagate it to a sphere geometry. This is mandatory to have a clean eight node hexa mesh, right? So I will show you how to efficiently generate this kind of geometry um, and how to mesh it. So we'll start from a clean hyper mesh and we will use the sketch tool and click on new sketch here to define the cross section of the sphere and the cube. So we are going to select any plane to rely our sketch on. And once we click create, we have access to this sketch uh, plane and we will create the cross section of the sphere by selecting the arc by center and add tool here. We click the center of the sphere and define the outer line of our sphere. So here it's a sphere of 10 centimeters radius and we will link the center of the sphere here to the ends of this arc by straight lines. I'm pressing escape. Now the advantage of the sketch is we can parameterize it. So I can create a dimension here on the radius of the sphere, creating this measurement and Upon creation, I can select this, the assign variable button here to create a variable on this dimension. So you see that we have an L1 that's appeared and this creates a parameter in my model. So if I'm pressing escape here, I can get into the model and see that I have a parameter created here. This will allow me to modify easily the dimension of the sphere. So now I will exit the sketch of the sphere cross section and I will create a new sketch for the cross section of the cube. You will see afterwards why I need to use two different sketches for these two entities. So I'm clicking on new sketch once again. I need to select the same basis plane as the one used for the sphere per section. And you can see here that I have access to um, this manipulator where I can specify where I want the center of my sketch to be positioned. Right. So if I'm clicking this orange point here, which is the center of the sketch, I can align it I can drag it to the center of the sphere cross section. And when I'm clicking create, this will allow me to have the center of my sketch here with the black cross aligned with the center of my sphere previously created. And it will be easier to now define a rectangle by corners relying on this point, which is, I know, the center of the sphere. So I can draw whatever rectangle I want and I will repeat the process, the process of creating dimensions here linked to variables. So I will create a new variable for the length of this of the cube. So I have an L2 parameter now here. And I will also assign the same variable to the other side of the of the rectangle. So instead of creating a new variable, I will select L2 to link L2 to both sides of the rectangle. And you can see that I now have a square with two identical dimensions. Right? So I'm pressing escape again to exit the two sketches. And I can have access to the variables, the parameters I've just created with the variable manager here. And by clicking on it, this is the, the um, official process, the recommended process to access the variables and modify them. I can modify the radius of the sphere, for example, and the length of the cube, right? Very easily like this. So I will remain with a four centimeter cube and a 10 centimeter um, radius of the of the sphere for this demo. Just keep in mind that this parameterized model is updated until you don't create three D geometries or don't create any mesh on the surfaces created by the sketches. So all the following steps uh, will be three D volume creation and mesh creation. So this will not be updated if you afterwards update the parameters as you just saw, right? So the, the update of the parameterization stops here, but it's useful to modify the 2D geometry basis, basis that you will use in the rest of the process.
So now, as I said, I'm going to create the three D geometries I need. So I will uh, get in topology menu here. Use this um, revolve button. First, so you have two different buttons in in the same one, a revolve one and an extrude one. So I will first revolve the surface representing the cross section of the sphere. So that's why I needed two different sketches, one that's going to be revolved and one that's going to be extruded, right? So the sphere is going to be revolved. I will select the rotation axis, ask for a 90 degree rotation to create the sphere and say, okay. And then I will extrude the square cross section. So as soon as I'm clicking on the surface, the direction of extrusion is automatically set to the normal of the surface, which is fine to my application. And I would ask for four centimeter extrusion and say, okay, validate it. So I now have, uh, I mean the solid selection, and now I now have two different solids, right? But they are just intertwined together. So if I want to have two separate solids to create a, prop a proper mesh, I will get into the three menu here, select the Boolean option, and I will ask for um, a combination of my two solids here. So I will select my two solids and click on combine all to create two different solids. So now if I'm exiting the tool by escape and selecting the different solids, you can see that I have two different solids that are a bit cleaner. But still, you can see that when we select the sphere, we have these orange surfaces that shouldn't be there. So I will perform an additional step to clean this up. So I will come back to topology menu and click on the uh, split tool. And I will split this solid here. So I'm in the split tool. I'm going to select this solid and split it by the surface of my square here. Right, And I will perform exactly the same process for the lower surface here and ask for a split, right? So now I'm exiting the tool by escape. I'm selecting the two solids I want to keep, right? So these two solids, I'm hiding them and I can see that I still have additional solids here. So now I will select this remaining solid that I don't want and press the delete button. This will ask the user, so myself, if I want to also delete the associated surfaces. Yes, I don't need to keep the remaining surfaces and I'm going to do the solid, right? So I'm still in the solid section. I will press A to display all the solids that I had hidden. And now you can see that I have a clean separation between my two different solids and they are not intertwined together anymore, right? So now my cube is ready to be meshed, but I still need to perform some modifications of my outer sphere volume. So I need to draw lines from the summits of the cubes to the outer surface of the sphere. So to do that, I will once again use the split stitch option, but I will select the split interactive mod mode here. And you can see that when I'm uh, hovering over the different lines of my geometry, I, can, I, get it, I got attached to some of the different points. This is managed by the snap filter that we have here at the bottom right of the screen. If I click on it, I can have access to all the different entities that my mouse will be attached to, right? So here, for example, I have the, um, the middle of the lines here, which means that when I'm in the middle of the line, I'm getting attached to the midpoint of the line. So that's very useful to perform what I will have to do now. So I will click on the first summit of my cube, hold the control, uh, press the control button and drag it up to the uh, perpendicular point of the line or the midpoint of the line here. And this will generate a new line. So I have just pleated this surface into two different surfaces. To check that I can escape, I can exit the tool by pressing escape and pressing S to switch to a surface selection. And you can see here that I have two different surfaces whereas I had only one before, right? So I've split my surface into two. So I will repeat this process here for the two other surfaces of my sphere. So selecting the one summit of the cube, pressing uh, control and 
dragging to the midpoint of the outer surface, clicking on this summit, holding control and clicking on the perpendicular line here. Right, so now that I've splitted my flat surfaces, I will also need to split this outer surface of the sphere. And I need to split it from one of the points I've just created. So I'm going to click this one, for example, hold control, and I will need to drag up to reaching the surface center, which is where I want to split my surface. So I'm clicking here and I'm repeating this process, clicking on one point, holding control and reaching the other one for the other points I've created. So now I have the bounding lines of all the surfaces I want to create to split my outer sphere volume, right? So what needs to be performed now is step into the 2D option, create surfaces, which are going to be the surfaces that split my remaining volume. I will use the patch option here and select the bounding lines of my surfaces. So I have three lines bounding my surface here and I'm clicking play. So this has created the first splitting surface. I will create the second one the same way and the third one also exactly the same way, right? So here are all my surfaces and you can see that these surfaces are yellow because I'm in the, um, in the topology colored mode, which allows me to visualize the surfaces and these surfaces are shared by different volumes, which means why they are yellow. Whereas all the other ones are green, which means that they are only shared by one solid, right? So I'm going to escape the tool by pressing, exit the tool by pressing escape. And if I'm stepping back into the solid selector by pressing S as many times as needed, I can see that I have now three different solids composing this outer sphere, right? So I now have reached the exact same geometry as I showed initially and it is now ready to be meshed. So now I can get into the 3D menu here, click on map. I can see that all my solids are mappable in all directions, and uh, which means that I can mesh them all at once. I will select all of them, specify a mesh size, and another option that is interesting before clicking mesh is to have a look at the hamburger menu here and have a look at the element type that I want to use. So if I want to only get, in the end, eight node hexa elements, I need to specify quads only option here as element types to be sure that all my elements, all my 2D elements will be quads, which means that all the three elements created from them will be eight node hexa meshes, hexa elements. So I will select this quad option and the Source element size here is the same as the one you can specify there. So we'll click on mesh. And the next step is that you have a preview of the element densities that will be used throughout the solids, right? So you can click on these um, densities to modify them if you want, so for example. And as soon as you click on one of them, you can see that all the linked ones are automatically selected, like to, to perform, to, to keep these solids mappable you need to have the same densities of, of mesh on all these lines. So as soon as you select one of them, all the linked ones are automatically selected. So I will select all these in the queue and, specific, and ask for a density of six elements, for example, and I will select these ones that are also automatically selected. And I will also ask for a density of six. And now I'm ready to uh, trigger the 3D mesh and when I'm clicking on it, I have an instantaneous mesh of the whole sphere here um, automatically. So I can press escape to exit the tool and I can now check that I only have uh, eight node hexa elements, for example. So I can press E to switch my selector to elements and I can um, um, I can click on this elements advanced selection or uh, press the dot button and I can select my elements by configurations and I can see here that the only configuration of elements that's available is hexa eight node elements. So this is a, a good way to check that all the elements that are uh, in my model are hexa eight node elements. So this concludes this video on how to 
uh, mesh a sphere with 3D eight node hexa elements.